I'm Vivi. Do you want to buy a house in the UK? Same. So as I'm going to the process of finding a flat that I really like and would like to buy, I would like to document the process that I'm going through and I'll also go back to the beginning stages when I was saving up for a deposit and just quickly go through the first steps I took to figure out how much to save and how to save for a deposit in order to buy a flat for myself but a house, a property in the UK. <laughs> so for me I think the first step was understanding really how much I can borrow so I think in the first instance I either went on right move and they have a little calculator as well but I will link a calculator as well down if you would like to check how much you can borrow and it's important to know how much we can afford because it would set up unrealistic goals if we want the properties that it's not in our budget and um, yeah, a calculator would simply require to put your income, your expenses, how long you expect your mortgage to last and it should give um, an interest rate, but the interest rate varies from one bank to another. But most importantly, it will say the value of the mortgage or the amount you are allowed to borrow. So once that's out of the way, if you say you have 150,000 pounds allowed, that's kind of the max and we are gonna look at properties below that amount even slightly less because most properties seem to require offers over. So if you want to make sure you get something, it should stay within that range and not try to cross the amount that the banks advised. Otherwise, we're gonna have to save a lot more, which is quite intuitive, but after that, I think it's quite the fun part of looking at properties because that's the literally the only part that I feel like I'm enjoying just looking at different properties and checking what's new on the market and I usually go on Rightmove, I quite like Rightmove, the website and I would just have, if you are just starting to look, just a, a glance and I would just go for having an idea of how much the properties are for what you require so you would look for the area that you're interested in buying and the size of the flat or the house if you want a two bedroom you know, one bedroom three bedroom i don't know however amount and if you have other criteria that you require you can also put different filters on right moves and you can even set up notifications so that you get an email every time a new property comes up within the fi the filters the criteria you have set up for yourself which is quite helpful to just have that view of the market at your fingertips through just emails. But yeah, once you know the area and you know the properties, values that you require, um, it's when we decide how much we actually need to save up for a deposit. And it is normally implied I'm speaking as a first time buyer, so this is mostly gonna be like first time buyer advice. And for first-time buyers, you can get 5% deposit. So you would look at the values that you are aiming for to buy your house once you have decided on a range. And that's gonna be the range of the deposit, a minimum of 5%. I personally went for 10% of the property because you would get better interest rates. So if you have the option, always go for 10%. But if you just want the property and you want to get onto that property ladder quickly, you also have the option of starting with a 5% as a first time buyer, which I think it's quite a great option to have. Option to have. So say now you know that amount of how much you are requiring to save up for a deposit before you can actually go ahead and buy your property. I started my first my first goal when I decided I'm gonna save up for a house was to get a help to buy ISA which is also um, a bank account that is designed specifically for first-time buyers and I think it's a lovely initiative and we should all try to take advantage of it 
and of course I'm, I'm speaking here from my own experience and of course there will be people who are in a better financial situations or in a worse financial situation so I can only say what has worked for me but for me I tried to take advantage to the max of the help to buy ISA because it's such a good deal like such a good <laughs> investment account to take advantage of if you want to buy a house because you will get a 25 percent return rate which is un unheard of for all the money you put in there and that's money coming from the government you are limited to how much you can put in it but 25 percent return on an investment is brilliant so to me that's the main priority of trying to get as much as possible into that account and the catch is with the help to buy isa that you can in the first month that you open it you can deposit a thousand pounds and that's the most you can put in a month and after that every month you can put 200 200 200 200 and in the first month you can actually put a thousand pounds plus the 200 that you would put regularly so when you open it ideally you should have the 1200 pounds if you want to take advantage to the max of putting as much money as you can into that account before you get your deposit and get for get the cash back because a thousand pounds it's already 250 pounds coming from the government instantly so you just put that one time a thousand pounds deposit and you've made such a good profit but of course i am aware that not everybody can afford that for me i am quite the cheapskate so i'm always trying to get the best deals and i chose to wait um, two months before I, I got my first my first graduate job and I opened my account right when I had the 1200 saved up and I was like, I'll open it first day transfer gone <laughs> and after that I've always maxed it out and I always say if it's a good investment max it out if your employer pays a pension contribution contribution always max it out <laughs> but of course if you can't afford different situations very understandable but it's a great account and you should try to put as much as possible into it because it's going to help you get there faster in a way it's not it's quite time consuming after the first month to put 200 200 200 it's quite limiting so it's not really gonna get you there that fast but it's a good it's a good account to have as a start base that makes you contribute regularly and of course you can't take the money out you have to leave those money out otherwise you can't deposit more than 200 a month but besides that you also get a little interest rate so depending on who you open the isa with the bank will also have some interest rate i can't remember how much i have like one percent or something one percent interest rate yearly it's not a lot anyway but even that it's something that goes back into the account and you get the government 25% interest even on that small interest rate you get from the bank so as always <laughs> find the best um, interest rate you have available use the bank and max out the contributions for your affordability and of course this will imply knowing how much you can save up for a house and contribute to this savings account every month Besides the ISA, I also opened a high interest saving account, which is not that high of an interest. To be fair, I have a 2.5% interest account with the same bank and I'm sure you can get, I know you can get like 5%, so there are better interest rates out there that you can contribute the same or controlled amount, amount um, every month. And it tends to be £250. I know um, I'm with um, Bank of Scotland and it's 250 a month for 2.5 percent interest rate which is not great but it's an extra account that i can contribute money on and it helps me reach that goal faster i didn't think it was nationwide that was doing a five percent interest rate for also 250 pounds a month so definitely when this one expires i think it's next month for me that's expiring i'm gonna look into switching over to nationwide Apart from that, I've always found it quite helpful to have a spreadsheet or even like a diary of my 
savings just to visualize how much I am saving towards that deposit and I remember first time I've done that I actually had a little house drawn with a little graph going up and I could put like at the end of each month how much money I've added and reach towards that goal which was the the house roof <laughs> it looked pretty pretty silly but it was so satisfying at the end of the month to be like okay extra extra 450,000 added to my house deposit go there I can see the graph going up it makes me quite happy to see it so yeah I think it's quite good to have that visuals and to have that um, analytical information I don't know if analytical is the right term but the knowledge of your finances of how much you saved each month and how much you can save each month so I think that's all my advice to just getting started to save up for a house deposit and it is an enjoyable process like for me I, I really felt that satisfaction satisfaction every month of having a bit more and a bit more and getting what I wanted to go so I hope you don't find the process too stressful or daunting and you actually get to enjoy every month of working towards your goals. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely week.